Thank you, and uh, good afternoon to uh, everyone. Uh, Andy said that I'm a uh, professor and chair of accounting actually at the uh, University of Edinburgh. Uh, it's after lunch. I hope that this doesn't put you awake, the fact that I'm a professor of accounting. Uh, accounting is actually, in fact, a, a very, very interesting discipline, but I, will, I, I promise that I will not talk about that too much uh, tonight. Uh, or this afternoon. What I want to talk about is uh, how to go govern societies or societies. Um, societies is, a, is an interesting word. Uh, it was Bruno Latour on this stage a few years ago when he gave the uh, Clarendon lectures uh, that he made me reflect on the etymology of this word. Uh, another thing that can put you as, uh, as lip if you have seen my biography is that not only I do accounting, but I also do accounting history. What dreadful combination. <laughs> um, and uh, if, you, you know, if you believe that that is boring, it's actually quite interesting. There are quite a few things you can learn. But um, so uh, words have a history. And um, soci society comes from, as Bruno said, comes from uh, socius in uh, Latin, that means a uh, companion, and uh, ties. So how do you link uh, people together in communities? How do you link soci together in societies, in communities, and in organizations? So what I want to do uh, today with you is to talk about the uh, governance of these uh, societies. I'm Nair Edinburgh, I'm an associate fellow here. Um, and, uh, but I am originally from uh, Palermo uh, in Sicily. When I joined uh, the University of Oxford in 2003 and then I left in, in 2009, this was for me a completely different uh, world. Uh, and so what I'm going to offer uh, to you uh, is a kind of ethnography of a stranger coming to this different world. Uh, and I want to do this because uh, societies, uh, we, you know, in business schools, especially in these uh, last few years, we talk quite a lot about resilience, about how to make societies uh, better, how to make organizations work better, how to make people more engaged in, uh, in what we do. And I think that not many people think that there are at least two institutions that have lasted forever. Uh, they have shown that they are very uh, resilient. Uh, universities, this is the oldest uh, speaking, English speaking university in the world. Bologna is the, because I'm Italian, so Bologna is actually the oldest university in the world. Um, uh, they, uh, they are very resilient institutions. So how does this come? And uh, religious orders. I do a lot of research on the Society of Jesus and the accounting in the Society of Jesus. I promise I will not talk about accounting, okay? But, <laughs> Um, and again, founded in 1540 and still there. So what I want to do today is to make a comparison between two systems of governance. Uh, and that, is, in a sense, is the uh, experience, uh, is, is, is an ethnography, if you like, uh, of uh, my experience at Oxford, or an ethnography of, uh, of Oxford. This is what I learned in my six years here. So uh, on one side, with the idea of corporate governance, where um, uh, you have a board of directors and uh, you know, a few people there who make decisions. You know, they may be wise, they may be you know, uh, good, they may be illuminated, but it's actually rare to find many Steve Jobs around. So these people who are sitting there are very likely normal people. Uh, so they sit there, four or five, they make decisions, and then decisions percolate uh, down. Uh, and you may, you know, you may wonder what this, uh, what this red spot there uh, flashing is. I'll, I'll tell you in a moment, because uh, what is happening, for instance, in the universities now, or what is happening in, uh, in, uh, in business schools, is that universities and business schools are becoming more and more corporate. And so you may wonder what this uh, small dot flashing there is, do you know? That is very likely a member of faculty trying to wave and say, oh, you have to hear about me. You know, I'm down here. I want to, I want to be engaged. Uh, and so this is what I, you know, this is an expression. It's a, a bit uh, a dichotomical, uh, crude distinction versus uh, a different kind of governance that I experienced when I was uh, at Christchurch. That was my, uh, my college. A governing body, a crier church, meets in a room which is uh, squared and 
it's also the room where uh, uh, we had lunch uh, every day when, when I was there. But every other Wednesday, they relayed the, relayed the table in a squared uh, format. And um, uh, there are some placeholders uh, uh, on this table, to, and, and certain people, certain officers, sit always in the same place. So here sits the dean of Christchurch. The dean is nominated or appointed, I don't know exactly the word, uh, by the queen, who is chosen by God. So that is the line, okay? <laughs> uh, so it's like, uh, it's, this is a, a, a tribute to uh, Randy Martin, who unfortunately passed away this year, professor of politics and uh, art at University of New York. He was a choreographer and a dancer. Classical dance, you are in line with God, okay? Now, who sits opposite to the dean? Who sits opposite to the dean in a clear opposition to create a tension between celestial matters? If you happen to go to Christchurch, see the big hall and the, symbol the symbology of that place. You enter in the big hall, you see the high table, you see the seat of the president, a bust of the queen, a portrait of Henry VIII who founded the college, a gothic window pointing towards God. So that is the idea. So celestial matters. Who sits opposite to these celestial matters? talking about mundane affairs, dirty stuff, the treasurer, okay? <laughs> uh, then uh, you know that academics have, um, uh, have the tendency, and I'm glad that the clock started to, to work, uh, have the tendency to talk a lot, okay? So um, uh, this space here is basically a space where they interrogate themselves about what this place is about. Uh, because the only objective of, of that place is to, uh, to, to repeat itself in perpetuity. The word success uh, comes from Latin, succedo, that means to happen. So to be successful means to be there, to be resilient, to be strong. And so this is what they, what they, what they manage to do that, there, and we have to understand through what principles they do this. Um, so they can talk for ages, but here there is a kind of mediator. Uh, and that mediator is a very pragmatic mediator, is the steward, uh, which in a sense makes this, uh, this uh, layout quite similar to the idea of hierarchy. Hierarchy originally was, uh, I don't know if you know the etymology of the word hierarchy, it comes from hieros, which means sacred, and uh, arche, which means uh, rule in Greek. Um, so the hierarchy was a divine rule, but why was it divine rule? It was a divine rule because it was not a line of command and control, but it was a system of mediating tensions. So the person here was a mediator between two tensions, two opposite tensions that have to be balanced. And this is why accounting is important. It balances tensions. It builds relationships, it builds ties, and it balances them. So here you have the steward who says, look guys and, and ladies, ladies and gentlemen, you can talk for ages, uh, you know, in these places you talk for two hours uh, about the color of the carpet of the city of common room. Why? And, and I asked myself for three years before I started to understand how this worked. Uh, why do they do this? They are, these are smart people. They are busy, you know. Uh, and, you know, my, at the beginning I, I loved Said. I mean, Said is so nice and I still like it. But then after three, three years I started to, uh, to like this too. Uh, because this, uh, these things uh, have a function. So, for instance, talking two hours about the color of the carpet of the senior common room uh, helps uh, to understand who is sitting about, uh, around that table, but it also makes people uh, to have the courage to speak in this very formal environment. Everyone wears the gown there. Um, so this person here is a mediator, is a pragmatic mediator, because he now is a she, uh, says, look, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can argue about this uh, forever, but I have to organize the uh, college ball in six months, and it's a very important thing. People can die, uh, they can, they, you know, you know it's, it's, it's a very important. So either you take a decision, or I will not do it, okay? Then you have other placeholders there, senior censor and junior censor. Um, the senior censor and the junior censor are chosen in a secret meeting that happens where all the previous senior censors uh, uh, meet. Uh, the, the function of these two posts is to be spokesperson for academic matters. 
so no headhunters here. It's actually those who know what the job is about who choose secretly, or almost secretly, those who, are, who, who they think are most appropriate for uh, that job. This is a place where everything is discussed. In a sense, it's a space of transparency, but there is lots of, op of opacity as well. Again, transparency is not necessarily good. It needs to be balanced with opacity. If we were transparent during the financial crisis, the entire financial market would have collapsed. So opacity, in some occasions, is good. And we have to understand, we have to be wise. We have to understand when transparency is good and when opacity is good. Uh, then you have the uh, representative of the uh, cathedral, uh, because Christchurch is not Christchurch College, uh, is Christchurch, because it's a combination of a college and a cathedral. If you just say, if you say Christchurch College, you forget about the cathedral and the, the priest gets a bit upset. You know? <laughs> Uh, then uh, you have all the academics, you see, uh, wearing gowns. Very formal occasion. At uh, 5 to 2 every other Wednesday, you have to wear your gown, sit there, and wait for the dean to enter. Then the dean enters uh, and says, oh, please, please sit down. But if you don't step up, up, up she actually looks at you and says, why on earth you're not standing up? <laughs> you know? Uh, so, very formal environment. So, uh, in the, for the first three years, I sat here. Uh, because, yes, I liked being close to God, but I, I, I preferred being closer, closer to the door. Uh, because I, I really didn't understand what this thing was about. It was so alien to me. Uh, it was like a trip to the complete unknown. I am, after all, from Palermo. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so uh, this is a very interesting machine. It's a medieval machine, in fact. It's called a rhetorical machine that could take many different forms, amongst which uh, space, to interrogate, to question the rationale of decisions which uh, have to be taken in the, in the space. But I told you, uh, you know, this is a very formal environment. So how do you make sure that uh, people really scrutinize uh, the decisions that are taken? How many times have you been to a meeting where people nod all the time? I think it was Alfred Sloan who said once, oh, I see that everyone is in, in agreement on this board. I propose that we uh, suspend our meeting and we remit in a, in, a, in a week when we will all disagree. Because it's for, from disagreement that tensions are generated and good decisions and innovation is also generated. So here there are, there are a lot of tensions. So the first principle for making this machine work is that you rely on tensions. You don't want to align things because if you align things, you lose the space for innovation. You want to be in tension. Having an objective, having an intention, the, if you go back to the story of this word, to the history of this word, means that you have to be always in tension. You never know where you have to go. You always have to question what you're doing. So the first thing is a lot of tensions. Uh, tension between uh, you know, wisdom and money, tensions amongst different disciplines. Uh, when I was here, I established one thing that is still going on. It's called Italian Studies at Oxford. And, um, you know, the Fiat Serena professor of Italian invited me to his college. And uh, I was given the post uh, next to the president of that college, which I will not mention. Um, and um, I, am, I was a tutor in management. And so this, this person asked me two things. Which college are you at? And I said, Christchurch. Okay. I can still talk to you. <laughs> uh, which uh, discipline do you teach? Management. End of conversation. <laughs> uh, because here, another principle that makes this machine work, that makes the tensions be productive, is diversity. This board is very diverse. You have philosophers. You have mathematicians. You have people who do chemistry, physics psychology, uh, history, history of art, literature, and in the end, in these days, they also have to accept management. Mm -hmm. 
which means that the formament is of the people si sitting around, the way in which they think is uh, very different. And from this difference emerges the ability to scrutinize the value and the wisdom of the decisions that they take, but also the ability to innovate, to see things in a different way, to become, uh, to combine resilience with innovation. Diversity, as we have just heard, is a great thing to value. There is a third thing that this thing does, which is to engage the uh, participants, I mean, the, those who sit around the table, all of the faculty. And it does that because, um, in a sense, uh, you, I mean, this, this place is a place that sucks you in. I, I left uh, Christchurch in 2009, I still, I still have the master key, so I can go there and open the cathedral, you know? Um, and I still feel part of it, despite the fact that I'm sure that they've forgotten me entirely. Okay, so it re it's an institution that really sucks you in. And why does that? Because in a sense, uh, it makes you feel part of that community. It does not alienate you. It does not make you separated from the head. You are part of that thing. And this is when, uh, I'll skip the stuff about the committees because I know what you're thinking. All the decisions are taken in the committees. Yes, that's true. Uh, but I've seen decisions that were taken in committees and then um, uh, changed uh, completely. Uh, but the engagement happens because what, it, what that system does is to make sure that you do not suspect uh, and become suspicious of power. And this is Machiavelli. The less one knows, the, ma the more one suspects. So what I wanted to offer to you today is an alternative, is a, a, a choice between a corporate vision that alienates and a collegiate vision that uh, engages the uh, participants to that enterprise. I have in front of me uh, members of societies. I have in front of me future leaders of society. You now have, I think, a choice. There are opportunities. Sometimes we do not know that they exist. Sometimes we have forgotten why these things were created, like hierarchy. Hierarchy was an instrument of mediation. Now you know it, you have a choice. And I hope that you will exercise this choice with uh, wisdom. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>